All right, we are live in studio with Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina, ambassador to the United Nations. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, I got it. Now try that again. It's great to be here. Thank <laughs> you. Here you go. I see. It's I got to press the right button, and then we can hear you. All right. So um, I want to start off because we don't have a ton of time. On, I guess the biggest story is the shooting in Nashville. You were governor of South Carolina during the Charleston shooting, um, shooting in a Christian church. We have a shooting here at a Christian school. Um, what were your first thoughts, um, on this and sort of the big reaction of how do we do this? How do we address this? Can we fix it? The first thought is how do you protect your state? You know, yeah. because, one, you want to protect those families who've lost loved ones. It's devastating for a community. It's devastating for a state. And so, you know, the hardest part is the national media comes in and they want to define it immediately. Mm. And your job is not to worry about the national media. Your job is to worry about those families. And I I really feel for the people of Nashville and for Tennessee, this is going to take a while. Yeah. Uh, you just don't, especially when children are involved, you just struggle with that. And I'll tell you, it is the reason we have to address mental health Mm. it is the cancer that no one talks about and it's the one thing we have got to make sure we take care of one in four people have mental health issues but if treated they can live a perfectly normal life and this is another tragedy of a mental health challenge because we refuse to to deal with it and identify with it yeah and it feels like everybody whenever we have a shooting retreats to their corners and just starts attacking each other um the congressman for that district said we can't fix this or we're not going to fix this um can we we can fix it yes so first of all when it comes to schools we should have one mode of entry um without question there should be no open doors on the other side the second thing is you can have that ballistic tape that will keep gunshots from going in windows doors Mm. we should do that for every school we should have a law enforcement officer in every single school and we should make sure that we have mental health professionals, not guidance counselors, mm-hmm. mental health professionals in every single school. That's the first start of that aspect. The second aspect is we've got to look at, you know, availability of care. Many people know they have a mental health issue, but they, there are not enough therapists. We have a therapist shortage. Mm-hmm. Then when you go and you try and get the medications, they're not covered by insurance. So it's one issue after another issue after another issue. People want to retreat to guns because it's easy. Yeah. But to really fix this, we got to dig deep and get to the hard uh, questions and solutions that we have to solve. So Governor Sununu has got a speech coming up at the NRA convention. You've been endorsed by the NRA. Everybody's talking about guns. Should Governor Sununu give that speech? You know, how do you um, approach that, the gun part of it? He absolutely can give the speech. Look, I mean, I'm a concealed weapons permit holder myself. Mm-hmm. We We know how to responsibly deal with guns. And when something like this happens, it's all the more reason you speak about it. Because you could take away all the guns away from good people, and the bad people are still going to find a way to get them. So what's better is to sit there and and not run away from the conversation, talk about the conversation. Mm -hmm. We should all want to fix what happened in Nashville. We should all want to do things so that the church shooting like we experienced had. You know, you look at the church shooting that we had, that killer never should have gotten a gun. But what happened was... You know, the background check that he that the feds were supposed to go through in 72 hours, they didn't do it. So if they don't finish their background check, they give you the gun anyway. Why don't we just focus on making sure the feds do their job? Why don't we focus on making sure we secure our schools? Why don't we focus on making sure we deal with mental health? Those are the things we do. Then if you want to talk about guns, we can have a conversation about guns, but that's not going to be the key solution that we need to fix this problem. Yeah, on on the gun issue, on the range from, say, um, repeal the Second Amendment uh, to do nothing. <laughs> where uh, where would you say you fall on, in that conversation about the federal response? I mean, don't forget that government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of mm. people. We don't want to take away, you know, guns from people who want to be able to protect themselves. We don't want to take away guns from people who like to hunt. What we do want to do is say, how do we stop the wrong people from mm. getting guns? And the first thing you have to do is deal with this mental health issue. Look at all the last shootings. How many of them were sane people? How many of them weren't troubled in some way? Right. You know, let's look at that. It's, you know, but people don't want to deal with what's hard. We've got to deal with what's hard. Okay. So um, I was going to see if we have enough time for another question, and we do. So let's uh, go to um, the border really quickly because you are you, you've got a trip coming up I'm right? going to Eagle Pass this weekend we are going to bring attention to illegal immigration you know it is 
irresponsible what the Biden administration has allowed to have happen. But we're going to be the first candidate that goes there and says, let's fix it. And I've already got a plan on how to fix it. And that is do what we did in South Carolina, put a mandatory E-Verify program in place so that no business can hire anyone who's illegal. Let's fire the 87,000 IRS agents, instead put 25,000 on Border Patrol and ICE agents in place. Let's go and make sure that we stop taxpayer handouts. Billions of our tax dollars have gone to illegal immigrants. That needs to stop. Defund sanctuary cities like Lawrence, where we see crime is coming through. And let's make sure we go back to remain in Mexico. Let's keep Title 42. And once and for all, let's end catch and release and start catch and deport. All right, so how do you defund a sanctuary city? Well, first of all, they should not get any government money if they don't follow the laws of this mm-hmm. country. I mean, it's that simple. All of them get state and federal funds. They shouldn't do that if they refuse to follow the laws. We ca- we are a country of laws. The second we stop being a country of laws, we give up everything this country was founded on. So New Hampshire um, passed a law saying, hey, we don't want our local police departments to enforce gun laws that might not be where New Hampshire is on gun laws. So um, the left plays this game, too, is saying, okay, well, then what about New Hampshire, which says, yeah, we're not really too keen on enforcing federal gun laws. I mean, first of all, a law is a law. We should enforce no matter what the laws are, period. And I think there's too many people that try and skirt the laws, bring exceptions to the laws. Laws are on the books for a reason. Mm -hmm. Let's follow them. Let law enforcement do their job. Have backs of law enforcement while they do their job. Those are things that keep us safe in the end. And we've got to get all the noise out. We've just got to start doing what's right. And on the um, IRS, folks, uh, actually, you know what? Let's take a quick break. Um, I want to follow up on those uh, 87,000 IRS. It's the WFEA Morning Update with Drew Klein. And we are back with Nikki Haley, who um, stopped in the studio. You know, just just popping around Manchester, you know, just having to come on in. So we appreciate you coming in. Uh, And I wanted to get to your point about the 87,000 IRS hires the Biden administration is doing. Um... So here's my take on it. I want to get yours. I agree not having more agents because Biden wants to hire agents to increase revenue by auditing more people. I think that's kind of a weird idea. But wouldn't it be good to hire some more IRS staff so that it doesn't take eight months to get a letter back or so that if you make a phone call to ask about your taxes, maybe somebody will answer it? In the interesting thing you'll find with agencies is they just need to remember they work for the people, not the other way around. You don't have to add more people. They just have to do their job. I mean, that's the biggest thing I found as governor of South Carolina is we went into every agency and we said, if you're costing a person or a business time, you're costing them money and that's no longer acceptable. Hmm. And we started turning things over. When you get a good leader that goes in there and reminds them of what they're supposed to do, I would go into every agency. The first thing we do is we clean out the red tape, we clean out the bureaucracy, but we clean out the dead weight too. A lot of times they're old programs that slow agencies down. You remind them that it's the customer first. In this case, the customer is the taxpayer. That's what we need to do. And by the way, instead of them going after middle America, they should go after the hundreds of billions of dollars in COVID fraud that is yet Mm -hmm. to be retrieved. So um, with dealing with a bureaucracy, you've got powerful unions. Like how, as a president, that seems like a, a really daunting task. How do you take that on, that challenge of getting the federal government, the bureaucracy, to be more responsive to people? You know, first of all, remember that things are best handled in the states. And mm-hmm. I know that as being a governor. And so you want to remember that government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. And that's the problem. We've had the socialism creep where everybody thinks that government can do all things better than the people can. And so you've got these programs that have been built over time that have just gotten so big that have slowed the process down. We see that whether it's in IRS processing. We see it whether it's in immigration. We see it whether it's in the Department of Education. All of those things have become dead weight. And so we've got to go back and say, what can the states do? And one thing I would do as president is push more to the states, whether it's education, whether it's health care, whether it's anything else of those um, sorts, let governors handle it. Let states handle it. The federal government should be a support system. They shouldn't be driving things. And that's the problem we have. I mean, honestly, the federal government breaks more than it fixes. And so we have to keep it in the state's hands. And you mentioned COVID spending. Um, you know, Biden's budget proposal sets uses that COVID money to set a new baseline for federal spending going forward. Um, how would you address from the budgeting standpoint dealing with uh, trillions of dollars in new spending constantly going up? How do you get control of the spending? The accountant me is infuriated <laughs> over the fact that we are $31 trillion in debt. We're borrowing interest just to make our 
uh, we're borrowing money just to make our interest payments. But I'll tell you the one thing we have to remember, it's easy to blame Biden, but our Republicans mm-hmm. did this to us, too. You know, they went and passed that $2.2 trillion COVID stimulus plan that paid people to sit on the couch, that expanded welfare. We now have 90 million people on Medicaid. We've got 42 million people on food stamps and all of that without accountability. And so now we have, you know, all of this COVID fraud. We've got all of the spending. And what do Republicans do? They double down and open up earmarks again for the first time. So now after 10 years, they're back at earmarks. They passed 7,000 in December. These are things like seven and a half million on horse racing in Arizona, $30 million on an honors college in Vermont, $10 million on a courthouse in Colorado. That's not where taxpayers want their money to go. And so in order to fix our economy, we've got to go and claw back the 500 billion of COVID money that hasn't been spent, go after the hundreds of billions of COVID fraud that we have, stop the spending, stop the earmarks, balance a budget like I did as governor and like people do in their homes. And then let's go after entitlement reform. We've got to do it. And that means you don't go after money that's been promised to people. My parents are in their 80s. I don't want them touched. But my kids are in their 20s. We go to them and we say we're going to raise the retirement age so it's closer to life expectancy. We're going to take cost of living and make it more like inflation. We're going to limit benefits for the wealthy. And we're going to expand Medicare Advantage so that people have more options and run down the cost of debt. All right. So while we're losing the votes of 20-year-olds, just just kidding, uh-huh. Uh Along that line, TikTok, ban it. Should the federal government ban it? What are we waiting on? Ban it. I mean, if this is the way you have to look at TikTok. Imagine someone looking over your shoulder at everything you're watching on your phone. Then imagine somebody analyzing the way you're thinking when you play on your phone. And then imagine someone actually taking that data out that you are using all to study how you think. That's the Chinese military. The EU has banned TikTok. India's banned TikTok. Pakistan's banned TikTok. Why are we slow? Because Biden doesn't want to lose votes. They think that we're going to lose all the 20-year-olds. I think national security should be more of a priority than Democrats worrying about the votes that they're going to lose. And thinking of national security, so you're, you're going to the border, you've got a plan for the border. Um, there are a lot of Republicans who say, we can't give aid to Ukraine because we have a border problem here. What do you think about that argument? We can balance multiple balls at one time. That's the problem. It's not an either or. You have to look at the fact that this war with Ukraine is bigger than Ukraine. This is about a war on freedom, and it's one we have to win. There is nothing China wants more than to see Russia win, because a win for Russia is a win for China. When they held hands before the Olympics and said we're unlimited partners, that meant something. Mm. But you have to look at the fact if Ukraine wins then that sends a message to China with Taiwan. It sends a message to Iran that wants to build a bomb. It sends a message to North Korea testing ballistic missiles. If Ukraine loses, Russia has told us what they're going to do. They're going into Poland and the Baltics next. China's going to help them, and then it's a world war. Now, that doesn't mean we send cash to Ukraine. I don't think we should spend any money going to Ukraine. I don't think we should put troops on the ground, but we should get with our allies and make sure that Ukraine has the equipment and ammunition to win this war and to finish it. So it's I, you keep hearing the term blank check, right? We, we're not, to my understanding, we're sending them military aid, right? There's not a blank check. We right? actually, Biden actually sent them money to pay for their pensions. Yeah. That's not what we but, need to be doing. But it's a set amount of money, right? It's, it's not saying, hey, here's a line of credit. It it doesn't matter. When you give a country money, you can't follow that it's going actually where it needs to go. That's why it's better to give tangible things and not to give money where you can't follow the follow the train of money. Uh, What do you think of the comment that uh, it's a territorial dispute? It's so ridiculous. When somebody invades a country, that's not a territorial dispute. I mean, this is not the times to get this is not the time to get weak in the knees on Russia. And that's exactly what DeSantis is doing. That's not what we need to do. This is the time to let Russia know what we're for, what we're against and what we expect of them and and be tough. So um, really quickly, because we have to go. Would you consider Chris Sununu as a good vice presidential candidate? He's a good governor. <laughs> he's a good governor and he's a good friend. And, you know, I'll tell you, um, I always enjoy seeing him. We missed each other this go around, but I think New Hampshire's lucky to have him. Um, yeah, but vice president, you know, that'd be a good, uh, you know, you know a Haley I, Sununu. I'm not That's, ruling it out. Not ruling it out. <laughs> I'm not ruling it out at all. You got to rule out Tim Scott, though, unfortunately, That's because right. of the, the thing. But what about The Rock? Dwayne The Rock Johnson? You know, I'm, I haven't thought about vice president. 
I've got to I've got to win New Hampshire. I've got to win Iowa, and then I got to sweep my state in South Carolina. So that's our focus first. All right. Well, Nikki Haley, thanks so much for your time, and thanks for joining us. I hope everybody will go to nikkihaley.com. Join the movement. All right. There you go. You know where to go. We'll be right back on the W.